Welcome back to the 6-5 on the road here at Computex. I'm joined by Olivier Blanchard and Qualcomm's Group GM of Connectivity, Broadband and Networking, Rahul Patel. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Anshul, for having me. How are you doing? Doing great. Uh, it's a little bit warm, but you know, it's Taiwan, so it's that time of year. It's beautiful Taiwan. Um, I was going to start the discussion off by kind of asking about, you know, we've talked about PC connectivity for quite some time. And as a discussion has shifted towards NPUs and all these other capabilities, it's kind of drifted away from connectivity. So I'd love to hear about how you think about connectivity in this new AI PC era. Excellent question. I think, uh, you know, the PC is reinventing itself. Uh, as Qualcomm says, this is a rebirth of the PC. Having said that, uh, connectivity was definitely way ahead in its uh, planning and execution of products. We saw that in our mobile products about a year back when we announced our Wi-Fi 7 capabilities and as a result of not only Wi-Fi 7 but being 40% more efficient on battery life and bringing a high band simultaneous capabilities into Wi-Fi 7 yielding five gigabits per second connectivity throughput. Those were the elements that ultimately were going to be very useful for this new generation PC platform versus what we had been using in the past. As with AI, latency matters. Five gigabits is what it's needed on this platform. As with AI, there's tremendous amount of compute. Battery life matters. And this 40% improvement in battery life consumption from Wi-Fi point of view also matters. And so th those are the two key elements on which uh, the connectivity product line um, evolved for the new generation PC. Great. All right, so speaking of that, um, so I think one, one of the questions I want to ask you is how moving from traditional Wi-Fi uh, to Wi-Fi 7 and 5G connectivity on these new PCs, these Copilot Plus PCs specifically, uh, is, is going to bring real world uh, advantages to commercial users and then in also users in the, co the consumer segment, um, but specifically also how those are going to enable and move forward a lot of the new AI-powered use cases. Well, I think uh, what um, you have seen in the first generation of AI PCs is that you're seeing uh, Wi-Fi 7 capability. We at Mobile World Congress uh, earlier announced our Fast Connect 7900 capability. What that is doing is also bringing AI in the radio implementation itself. And you will see that in the next set of uh, platforms that will launch uh, in the next generation of PCs. Um, what that is all about is managing the radio bandwidth based on the applications that are running on the platform. It is also about managing the latency based on what the application needs may be, and also modulating for performance, speeds and feeds based on the battery life consumption. So that level of AI, or I would say network management capability in wireless radio is gonna be in our next generation of uh, connectivity products. And so, as you can see, you know, AI is gonna be not only on the NPU, but other parts of the uh, platform as well. And it's very important that connectivity does not slow down the experience that's needed to be delivered on the AI platform. Great, and you know we've talked a lot about Wi-Fi already, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on how additional connectivity solutions um, can, that you, you can bring to the PC space might change the way users experience their PCs. Excellent question again. I think uh, so what we announced at Mobile Congress was a Fast Connect 7900. Fast Connect 7900 is probably the world's only radio capable of integrating uh, dual band Wi-Fi, uh, also supporting six gigahertz, wherever in the world that six gigahertz capability is there. Uh, dual Mac implementation of Bluetooth, so you got two Bluetooth uh, radios firing at the same time for multiple use cases, and then also UWB. And so it's all monolithic, single die implementation. And you can see a lot more radio frequency capabilities are coming into a single implementation from Qualcomm. Other than that, we are also bringing 5G modules to our platforms, right? So these platforms are going to be 5G capable should uh, and product needing to be support uh, 5G. And so if I kind of uh, operate at a higher level of abstraction, you are seeing 
anywhere from two gigahertz to you know multiple gigahertz of frequency spectrum covered by radio capabilities in these platforms. And that is the level of complexity uh, that uh, Qualcomm is delivering in this platform. And it's not about packing just radios, but also ensuring the interoperability, the orchestration of uh, various frequency bands taking place in the platform is in a way that does not kind of interfere with each other. The coexistence dimension across these spectrums is ex essential from experience point of view. And so there's a lot more from a technology and execution point of view that goes into these platforms to deliver that AI platform experience. That makes sense. So <clears throat> I, I don't want to put you on the spot and reveal any secrets about roadmaps, uh, but obviously Snapdragon X Elite uh, and just the X platform period is uh, obviously part of the Snapdragon ecosystem. It's not just a PC play, it also works with other Snapdragon platforms. And so I'm thinking about interoperability and new use cases uh, for users who use their mobile devices, their PCs, XR. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you're thinking about next-gen use cases in this new era of, of Snapdragon X-powered PCs? Well, I think uh, it, it is very essential that, quote-unquote, my mom is able to use some of these devices flawlessly. Experiences uh, that uh, would involve authentication using a phone or a phone being in proximity of a PC. As a result, PC unlocks for my mom. I think those are the experiences that we'll see come about along with uh, our products and our software capabilities. Also, I think understanding the entire ecosystem, what's happening in the wireless medium, um, dynamically adjusting the performance requirements, latency requirements accordingly is going to be key. Interoperability between your Snapdragon you know, mobile platform, Snapdragon X Elite PC platform, uh, Snapdragon XR platform, uh, a Snapdragon Ride platform, which is the automotive platform. All of those aspects have to work seamlessly. And I think uh, you know, we are uniquely positioned to kind of serve all these platforms from connectivity point of view to deliver that experience of interoperability and ease of use. Yeah, it seems like a, like a good value proposition to move ahead with. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And it, it, it does not hurt uh, Qualcomm being a leader in Wi-Fi access points and Wi-Fi gateways as well. And so, you know, that's definitely, you know, uh, the centerpiece for the networking experience. And that's where, you know, we also come and play in a nice way. And that helps uh, the overall uh, delivery of experience. Thanks again, Rahul, for joining us. And please stay tuned for the rest of our coverage at Computex. Uh, we'll be recording more sessions and don't forget to follow us on social and continue following us as we do more sessions throughout the show.